the fires of autumn this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by bill mosley the fires of autumn by a a milne from if i may librivox coffee break collection number 9 the fires of autumn the most important article of furniture in any room is the fireplace for half the year we sit round it warming ourselves at its heat for the other half of the year we continue to sit round it moved there too by habit and the position of the chairs yet how many people choose their house by reason of its fireplaces or having chosen it for some other reason spend their money on a new grate rather than on a new sofa or a grand piano not many for one who has so chosen his house the lighting of the first fire is something of a ceremony but in any case the first fire of the autumn is a notable event much as i regret the passing of summer i cannot help rejoicing in the first autumn days days so cheerful and so very much alive by november the freshness has left them one's thoughts go backwards regretfully to august or forwards hopefully to april but while october lasts one can still live in the present it is in october that one tastes again the delights of the fireside and finds them to be even more attractive than one had remembered but though i write october let me confess that coal controller or no coal controller it was in september that i lit my first fire this year perhaps as the owner of a new and as i think very attractive grate i may be excused there was some doubt as to whether a fireplace so delightful could actually support a fire a doubt which had to be resolved as soon as possible the match was struck with all solemnity the sticks caught up the flame from the dying paper and handed it on to the coal in a little while the coal had made room for the logs and the first autumn fire was in being among the benefits which the war has brought to london and a little less uncertain than some is the log fire in the country we have always burnt logs with the air of one who was thus identifying himself with the old english manner but in london never unless it were those ship's logs which gave off a blue flame and very little else but seemed to bring the fact that we were an island people more closely home to us now wood fires are universal whether the air will be purer in consequence and fogs less common let the scientists decide but we are all entitled to the opinion that our drawing-rooms are more cheerful for the change however if you have a wood fire you must have a pair of bellows i know a man who always calls them bellas which is i believe the professional pronunciation he also talks about a hussif and a cold chisel a cold chisel is apparently the ordinary sort of chisel which you chisel with what a hot chisel is i never discovered but whether one calls them bellows or bellas in these days one cannot do without them they are as necessary to a wood fire as a poker is to a coal fire and they serve much the same purpose there is something very soothing about poking a fire even if one's companions point out that one is doing it all wrong and offer an exhibition of the correct method to play upon a wood fire with a bellows gives one the same satisfaction 
and is just as pleasantly annoying to the onlookers. They alone know how to rouse the dying spark, fan it gently to a flame, until the whole log is a triumphant blaze again. You, they tell you, are merely blowing the whole thing out. It is necessary, then, that the bellows-making industry should revive. My impression is that a pair of bellows is usually catalogued under the heading Antique Furniture, and I doubt if it is possible to buy a pair anywhere but in an old furniture shop. There must be a limit to the number of these available, a limit which has very nearly been reached. Here is a chance for our ironmongers or carpenters or upholsterers or whoever have the secret of it. Let them get to work before we are swamped with German bellows. It is no use to offer us pokers with which to keep our log fires burning. We must have wind. There is one respect in which I must confess that the coal fire has the advantage of the wood fire. If your favorite position is on the hearth rug with your back to whatever is burning, your right hand gesticulating as you tell your hearers what is wrong with the confounded government, then it does not greatly matter what brings you that pleasant dorsal warmth which inspires you to such eloquence. But if your favorite position is in an armchair facing the fire, and your customary habit one of passive thought rather than of active speech, then you will not get those visions from the burning wood which the pictures in a coal fire bring you. There are no deep, glowing caverns in the logs from which friendly faces wink back at you as your head begins gently to nod to them. Perhaps it is as well. These are not the days for quiet reflection, but for action. At least, people tell me so, and I am very glad to hand on the information. End of the Fires of Autumn by A. A. Milne Recording by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA